Hi everybody and welcome to the Fedora 41 release party. Uh, I'm joined by Kyle Davis and Jonathan Wright who brought us the change in F41 of replacing Redis or Redis, I'm kind of saying that wrong, the guys can correct me, uh, with Valky. And I'm delighted to be joined by the two of them who will talk to you a little bit more of the Valky project and the change in F41. So, turn it over to you guys, please. Hey, uh, thanks for having us. Um, I'll just go over for a few seconds, uh, you know, what Valky is and and why why it's displacing Redis and Fedora. And then Jonathan and I will just have a little chat about what that actually means uh, for Fedora 41. So um, for those of you who don't know, Valky is a key value store. Uh, it's going to sound very similar to Redis because that's kind of what it came from. Um, so functionally, uh, earlier this year, around March 20th, Redis changed their license to something uh, that's not open source, this kind of proprietary license. Um, and uh, two thirds of the companies that were uh, kind of uh, maintaining Redis didn't like that. Um, and they went to the Linux Foundation and uh, formed Valky. Um, so it's a, uh, we were able to release very quickly uh, 7.2, uh, just a few days after that. It happened all very quickly. As you can see, eight days after that, we formed the, the project. Then um, just a, you know about two weeks after that, we released Valky 7.2, which was a uh, functionally a, a taking the source code of Redis, the last open source version of it, um, changing names around and doing some very minor tweaks just to make it able to be run as the Valky project. And then um, just a few uh, months ago, um, not even months ago, um, you know, we, we released uh, Valky 8.0, which was the, the first one that had some major improvements to it. Um, so that's how Valky got where it was. You know, this is the timeline that happened very quickly. Um, and, you know, the thing to know about it is that, that Valky is um, fully compatible with Redis 7.2, uh, the open source version of it. It's totally vendor neutral. It's uh, um, kind of shepherded by the Linux, Linux Foundation. Uh, we use the BSD3 license, which is the same license used by Redis. Uh, it's built by contributors from you know across the industry and the open source community. Um, just so you know, there's a lot of things that happened in, in that time period. When Redis changed the license, there were a lot of projects that kind of came around. Um, I, I won't belabor all the points that, um, on, on this particular slide, but effectively, uh, Valky is um, the closest to what Redis was. Um, previously in a variety of ways from the license uh, to how it's built, um, you know, um, and, and what you need to run it. Um, and, you know, of all the different choices you have, it's probably the one that's most actively developed at this point. Um, and so you can just, you know, transition directly into it. And it was kind of a one of those things that, you know, it's very easy to make that migration. Just some more about the project. Um, we have supporters from a, corporate supporters from across the industry. Um, we have more than 86 contributors to the engine itself, uh, another 54 or more, or more at this point, um, working on the clients and supporting libraries that make you know the whole picture of, of Valky um, and more than 500 commits from across the project. It's really one of those projects where you can really keep up with it. It's, it's uh, quite actively developed. So, um, you know, that's kind of the Valky project in its whole, like I said, it's coming from a, a whole lot of folks across the industry. Um, you know, these names on the screen might be something you're familiar with. Um, and if you're not, that's okay too. Uh, it's an open source project that you can look at it and, uh, you know, contribute to it anytime we're open to contribution. Um, and it really is the continuation of, of what you probably loved in Redis. Um, and, uh, you know, now it's just under a, a new name with, you know, two thirds of the same companies kind of, uh, running it. Um, so that's Valky in kind of a nutshell. Um, you know, I, I gave my kind of spiel here, uh, and I kind of now want to just, you know, hand it over to talk Jonathan to talk a little bit about the package in Fedora 41, and we'll have a chat about it. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about how the decision was made to replace Redis with Valky uh, among the uh, the other options that were available. So year, several years back, um, I started working on a package for a project called KDB. Uh, KDB was a, or is, a fork of Valky uh, that tries to multi-thread it, increase performance, things like that. Um, I never finished that package. I had it, you know, about 90% of the way done. 
Um, so, you know, skip forward about a year from when I started on that. And that's when Redis announced their license change. Um, I saw that hit the Fedora devil mailing list. And, you know, immediately people were, were listing KDB as a, uh, a potentially viable alternative. John, so can I that. in here? One second. You said uh, KDB was a fork of Valky. It was a fork of Redis. Just good catch. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> KDB was a fork of Redis, not a Valky. Valky did not exist at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, on the, on the mailing list, um, when, when all the talk about the Redis license change started, I replied and said, well, you know, I'm already working on KDB. Let me finish this up. Uh, so I kind of... I guess took point on the the issue on the mailing list from that point. I finished up the KDB package. We got that finalized into Fedora. Um, while that was happening, two more um, candidates popped up. Uh, there was Redict, Redict. I'm not sure how they pronounce it, uh, as well as Valky, which at the time was uh, named something like generic value placeholder KV. Placeholder KV, that's it. <laughs> so I began, uh, you know, Reddit had a name and, and they had versioned it. So I packaged Reddit. Um, again, you know, we're going back and forth on the mailing list. And um, since Reddit and Valky uh, or Placeholder KV were both aiming to be compatible with Redis, I had basically a package ready to go as soon as uh, Valky came up with a name and got versioned. Uh, so then we reach a point where we've got Valky, Reddit, and KDB all packaged in Fedora. Um, and there's, you know, nobody really knows which one is going to take lead. Uh, but it came, it became apparent pretty quickly. Uh, Valky was kind of taking lead on things. It was being more actively developed. They wanted to, you know, push, push development forward. Uh, whereas Reddit had kind of made a statement of maintaining the status quo, uh, which is great, you know, but that, that's not going to, um, be good for the project long term in terms of viability and uh, maintaining users and things like that. Valky wanted to actually push forward, uh, continue improving things, working on things, so on and so forth. Uh, I had a few chats with with Madeline early on, who founded the Valky project, uh, and it became very apparent to me that it was it was going to be the leader. So I really started putting a lot of my focus into the Valky project. Um, it was just a couple of weeks after that that. It was adopted by the Linux Foundation and, and really started getting structured. Uh, the, the developers were moving from Redis to Valky, uh, started getting you know big names associated with it, and it became very, very apparent this is going to be the future. So that's when we started the work on the actual in-place upgrade uh, for Fedora 40 to automatically convert from Redis to Valky. Uh, we wrote some migration scripts that, that handle that as part of the Fedora upgrade. Um, and that's that's where we've ended up now. The the upgrade is in Fedora 40. When you upgrade to 40, it will natively uh, convert you from Redis to Valky, and the the Redis package has been retired uh, in Fedora 40 uh, and on. Uh, it's incompatible due to the license change. Um, short de during the middle of all that, uh, Red Hat adopted the Valky package into CentOS Stream 10. So in Red Hat 10, Alma Linux 10, uh, you know, so on and so forth, all of the Red Hat derivatives, we'll be seeing Valky, um, which is uh, phenomenal to see. In my opinion, Red Hat acted pretty quickly on uh, on making a shift there. I'm really happy about that. And yeah, that's how we've ended up where we are now. Um, I've, I've swapped all of my workloads over to Valky. We've done the same over at Alma Linux. Uh, everything is is running great, and all of the the benefits. How quickly Valky was able to get up and and actually implement some improvements in Valky eight was really impressive, uh, and those have been you know, very quantifiable improvements. So I'm I'm very excited about the future of of the project and look forward to continue packaging it and maintaining it. Yeah, it was really great to see that, and it's it's so cool too, and you know, um, if you go in and you, you like install Fedora 41 and you do DNF install um, Redis, you you get Valky now. Um, and, and and that's just, you know, I was playing with one a box that I have um, running some other stuff in my house and, and it just kind of became very easy. And, and the other thing that you do, you don't have any anything to change really because we've done things like, you know, uh, did symbolic linking. Um, so if you type, you know, Redis CLI just on your muscle memory or maybe you have a script. Valky CLI loads. If you do, uh, you know, 
Valky server, um, it loads Valky, but you can also do Redis server because we there's symbolic links in the package um, that, that come from, from everything else. So it's very natural move over. There's really not much you have to do. You can have kind of heterogeneous uh, clusters because they all kind of work together. They speak the same language. It's a very seamless move. And I, you know, I, I, I think I wrote an article on um, Fedora Magazine that talks about how Jonathan's package, the Compact package, uh, works and, and how seamless the transition is. It's a really easy thing. If you haven't done it, it's it's just kind of a no-brainer at this point. Yeah, and that was one of the big things we had to take into account when we when we wrote the Compact package and the upgrade scripts. It had to be seamless, um, and it has to continue to be seamless. If people expect Redis to be there, um, you know, we'll, we will probably maintain that Compact package indefinitely. So anybody that, you know, we could be talking Fedora 50 in, in five years, and anybody that came from Redis originally, those sim links are going to continue to be there. Uh, we don't want to break those those workflows or anything like that. Um, and we know, you know, we know Redis is not coming back. They've they've made that license change, so we don't have to worry about conflicts or anything like that there. Um, one thing that I thought was really neat, uh, Fedora was was one of the first distros. If correct me, Kyle, if I'm wrong, I think the first distro to officially package Valky and to replace Redis with Valky through an That's upgrade uh, in line. Yeah. And uh, I, I think overall, we were one of the first to to have an official package for it as well mm -hmm. in the first two or three. Um, and it's been really cool to see other distros kind of follow, um, you know, on packaging Valky, um, on, on, I know OpenSUSE is doing uh, inline upgrades as well from, from Redis to Valky. Um, and it's kind of cool to see Fedora kind of leading in the space there. On, on something like this with a license change and, and finding a good alternative and, and helping to develop that that trend in, in the right direction. Oh yeah, I think that's the case. And I've been play, paying pretty close attention to the different distros that have been adopting it. And, and certainly Fedora was, was a leader here. Um, but it, it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, the the, the packaging of uh, uh, something like Valky versus something like Redis, just um, with the, the license change, showed the values that you have to do and, and the responsibilities that you have to your users to make sure they have a place to go, to make sure that it's not something that's going to be disruptive or ruin their day. Um, so it makes it a very easy thing. And, and from the project's perspective too, it's an important part of this. If you historically look at you know, Redis, they were uh, often not very excited about people installing from a package manager. Um, but now you know, Valky fully embraces this. We, we think it's an important part of how people get software and it makes it so easy. I mean, like containers are easy, sure, but like packages, super easy, you know, quick and easy to install, especially for development workflows. It's a key part of that. Yeah, definitely. And and it was really important to me when I was, you know, looking at, at what was going to be a potential replacement um, that everything about the project to replace Redis would be compatible with Fedora ideals, Fedora licensing requirements, um, and Valky definitely met all that. You know, there's a thriving community. There's an open source license. Um, you know, people are welcoming. Like you said, you're embracing OS packagers instead of pushing people towards containers or, or other distribution formats. Um, all of that is very important to Fedora uh, and largely contributed um, to the decision uh, and you know, ultimately, it wasn't my decision to replace Redis with Valky. It was, um, you know, it was adopted by Fesco. Uh, the community was was on board with it. Like, it wasn't just me. There was a bunch of people that also saw all of this benefit, all of this value, and the compatibility of the communities. Yeah, and, and you know, working with Fesco, and, it, you know, Jonathan did the lion's share of the work here, but just watching how they made the decision really does show how Fedora is like shepherding this through the community and making sure that there is good decisions that are made. I mean, this was thoroughly evaluated. It was three or four meetings we had to go through to do this. And it, like, clearly there was some things that were debated and um, this was a decision that was was made by Fesco. And I think it, it really shows, um, you know, all the things that kind of go into making sure that uh, a distro has has this kind of life and, and uh, makes, you know, so many things easier for users. So it, it was really cool to see that uh, kind of, how, how that all works. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, Kyle, is there anything else you want to mention? No, I mean, I think Valky's great. If you're interested in learning more about Valky, valky.io is our website. 
um, and you can get links to the GitHub repo. We'd love to have your contributions. Um, we'd love to for you to try it out, uh, install the package, either you know, install Valky today if you want to, or um, you know, take a look at the repo and understand how it all works, and uh, kind of see how it goes. But really cool to to be here and talk about it. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you both so much, not only for like landing the change in F41, but all of your efforts going up to that and joining today and putting the work in to share the content to the rest of the Fedora community. It's, it's a fabulous change. I'm delighted to have seen it land so well. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for running this, Aoife. Our pleasure. Oh, my, my absolute pleasure. If ever stops recording, I can let that. Guys, thanks.